Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today I am going to start a new series on how to play Sky Striker and provide some of the basics of how to play the deck. I know there's going to be a lot of people coming into the Striker community in the next couple weeks because it just received a whole bunch of banlist support. We just got Sky Striker Mobilize Engaged to 2, and then we also got Sky Striker Mecha Modules Multi Roll to 3 on the banlist. So, in the first episode, I actually want to touch on Something that I think will apply to the most people because this is something that every Sky Striker player has to face in the deck building in the coming format. And that is how many copies of multi roll should you play? So this is not so straightforward. I want to caution people just because the card has come to three doesn't automatically mean you have to play three in your deck. So uh, I want to talk about what is the optimal number how do you use the card? And hopefully you can come up with an answer for yourself on uh, how many multi roll you would like to play because it varies on how you're attempting to play the deck. So based on what you want to do with the deck, uh, pretty much tells you how many multi roll should be going in. So the first question we have to ask is, do you want to build your striker deck to go first or second, okay? This is going to have a big effect on how many multi roll you play because you're going to be using different effects of multi roll uh, in a primary slot, whether you're going first or second. And you know what? With that being said, let's actually talk about what the two effects of multi roll are. Our first effect of multi roll is once per turn, we can target one other card we control, send it to the graveyard. And then that means your opponent cannot respond to any of your spell card activations for the rest of this turn. All right, let's talk about some of the uses of that and let's leave it at literally a uh, you know straight up level and then we'll talk about some interactions that are also relevant. So your opponent cannot respond to spell card activations. Let's give some examples. So if you were playing Pot of Desires in your deck, you can activate multi-roll, send some other card you control to the graveyard and that means when you activate Desires or activate Engage, or activate reinforcement of the army, your opponent cannot use Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. When you're going second, this is really useful when using your board breaker spells. Uh, so for example, if your opponent leaves up one negate on the board, you can establish multi-roll and then you can send something to the grave and then you can play, for example, Raigeki or Harpy's Feather Duster and your opponent cannot respond to that with any card effects. So you get a pretty much a free wipe on the board. Um, you know, you can set up using Sky Striker Afterburners to pop a monster, say they have a, a Barone de Fleur on the field. Uh, if you activate multi-roll, send a spell and then you can activate afterburners and your their barone cannot negate your afterburners obviously they can negate the multi-roll in the first place but if they burn the negate on the multi-roll then your afterburners is going to work anyway so your multi-roll kind of serves a nice purpose there you can use sending a card from your field to the graveyard as a benefit as well say for example you get kaiju uh, and you have a kaiju on your field you can get rid of that kaiju with multi-roll and then uh, also be able to activate spells for the rest of the turn without response. Now, multi-roll also pairs well with other cards that you might have. So for example, uh, the field spell, Area Zero. When Area Zero goes to the graveyard, you can summon a ray or rose from your deck. Uh, because on the card it says, if this card in the field zone is sent to the graveyard by card effect, you can special summon one Sky Striker Ace Monster from your deck so you can use multi-roll to send a copy of area zero to your graveyard uh, to stop your opponent from responding to any of your spell effects uh, or activations and now area zero will also trigger to summon yourself a ray so even though you lost the field spell you're gaining a ray back and you don't lose any card advantage that way so uh, those are a few ways to use the first effect of multi-roll now let's talk about the second effect which is uh, arguably the better effect and the reason that multi-roll was put on the ban list in the first place uh, is that once per turn during the end phase you can set striker spells with different names from your graveyard up to the number of striker spells you activated this turn while this card was face up on the field but then that you banish them when they leave the field this pretty much means you can use all of your striker spells twice uh, say you activate multi-roll and then you activate a uh, widow anchor to negate your opponent's monster effect. 
in the end phase, you can set that Widow Anchor back to your field. So it's pretty much a double use of all of your striker spells. And you don't have to reset the ones that you activated. Say I have Widow Anchor in my graveyard. Say I have Widow Anchor in my graveyard. I have multi-roll up. Now I activate engage to search something. In the end phase, I can set the, the Widow Anchor even if I didn't use it this turn. So um, you can pretty much recycle all of your striker spells. You get double use on all of them just not on the turn you activate that. It's excellent for card advantage, very good for card advantage, but the card advantage comes at a delay. It comes at a delay of one turn. You get to use all of your spells normally, one for one, and then on the next turn you can use them again, but you can't double use them in the same turn. So uh, that is a little bit slow, and that is going to come into play on how many multi-roll we should be playing. So. Now that we've talked about what multi-roll does for the deck and how it synergizes with your other cards, let's talk about how many we should be playing. We have to decide if we're going first or second. If you're going first, the more likely use of the card is going to be the second effect, the one where you reset cards from your graveyard. And this is pretty much going to allow you to search something with Shizuku in the end phase, quick play it, and then reset it back to your field. Normally, when you search with Shizuku, uh, you just have it in your hand for follow-up. But with multi-roll on, on board, you can search, for example, Widow Anchor. You can search the Widow Anchor, quick play it to negate your own Shizuku, which of course does nothing, uh, you know, has no negative effects in your own end phase. Uh, and then Widow Anchor will go to the graveyard. Then Multi-Roll will be able to set that Widow Anchor back so it's now set on your field so you can use it as an interaction on your opponent's turn. So uh, if you are going first, you're going to want to have Multi-Roll in order to increase your number of interruptions by one. Is that really a big deal? Uh, maybe. Is you know It kind of depends on the format on how important having one more widow anchor really is and whether you would just rather have a different card than multi-roll in the first place would you rather have uh you know some other card like a hand trap and then just have widow anchor in your hand for follow-up or would you have rather have a multi-roll and then a widow anchor on your field it kind of depends what which one is more valuable our hand traps going to be very valuable then you might as well play fewer multi rolls and just have the hand traps instead uh, or if hand traps are not going to be so good then we're going to be able to have multi roll setting a widow anchor for us in the end phase for going first so uh, if you're going first i suspect that you're going to be one that you're going to want to be playing two copies of multi roll and that is to increase your chance of getting it from just the one but you also don't want to brick on it. If you draw two multi-roll going first, you have two cards that do not interact with your opponent, nor set up any interactions, provide any type of interruption, and you're pretty much going to lose that game. So uh, for those reasons, if you're going first, I do not recommend playing three. Uh, it's, it's just having, being down two cards that act as interruptions is just not good for 2023 Yu-Gi-Oh. It was okay, it was playable in 2018 Yu-Gi-Oh when Striker came out and you could set a uh, Widow Anchor and have one to two hand traps and be ready to go, uh, you know, for follow-up and be pretty confident that you would have it. But in 2023, opening two multi-roll is pretty much a game loss. So uh, keep that in mind when going first. I would really recommend playing at most two. Uh, you're could draw one or you could search one off of engage and have your shizuku plus multi-roll combo set up so yes uh on to going second going second multi-roll has a little bit more value because using the effect to send something off of your field uh, to stop your opponent from responding to spell cards is going to be is going to actually have value because a lot of your spell cards are board breakers. Your opponent is likely to have some kind of negates up or some kind of response to your board breakers. So uh, having the ability to send a card to stop your opponent from responding does get value. However, in 2023 Yu-Gi-Oh, yet again, if we are activating multi-roll as one of our six cards and sending a card away for free, 
as another of our six cards we're down to only four cards to break a board and to set up something to stop our opponent from just winning next turn that's that's not a lot that's going to be quite challenging i think it's a little bit too limiting on uh card value and therefore unless you can open the combination specifically of multi-role and area zero or multi-role and ray ray is also a card that combos with multi-role because you can chain ray effect to link summon but if your opponent has negates that's gonna be that's gonna be an issue but anyways unless you have multi-role plus area zero to mitigate that card that's being lost for free just to stop your opponent from responding to your spells which i don't even know how many spells you're gonna have left you might have opened hand traps and ray and you just might not even get value from that first effect in the first place multi-roll is going to be a little bit weaker second its other effect can come up the one to reset used spell cards uh use sky striker spells in general i i just don't think that multi-roll is good enough at breaking boards to be played in a going second striker deck and i think you can play uh, at most one copy to uh have it be searchable with engage if you think that you can play through a board or if you're in a more grindy matchup where you know your opponent might not kill you on the next turn and having that reset every turn for value is going to uh give you enough advantage where it's actually worth playing then i think playing the one is okay so yeah any more than one is going to be too bricky if you draw two you know if you draw two multi-roll going second that's two cards in your hand that do not break boards i suppose you can activate one set the other one and then send it for the no response effect so you know you can get rid of bricks that way but it's just not good enough in 2023 to be playing in a going second striker list in my opinion so i would play zero or one if you like to go second and i would play two if you like to go first just because going first having that reset off of shizuku's search is going to be very important in order to give you enough interaction uh to survive to even a third turn with going first striker uh whether striker should be played going first or second that's a topic for another video uh, in my opinion spoiler you should go second with striker but it's going to be based on your preference on whether you prefer to go first or second and based on that you should play either two or one or zero multi-role i highly advise against playing three multi-role in any sort of sky striker list whatsoever just because the card is not good enough in 2023 Yu-Gi-Oh to be played at more than two maximum so Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of striker basics uh stick around sub, sub to the channel uh for some more discussion of striker videos i have uh, several ideas for this series uh, for example playing the mirror match the mirror match might be pretty popular at your locals because a lot of people are going to be want to are going to want to be playing striker uh we're going to talk about going first or second we're going to talk about uh building an extra deck i'll be putting out a new deck profile for going first and for going second striker so make sure you follow uh the channel by hitting the subscribe button hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on those future episodes and leave a like and comment on this video and we will see you guys in the next one for some more sky striker basics